Hello everyone. Welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finance 1. This is Chapter 2, Probability Theory on Quantus Space. Okay, so let's talk about finite probability spaces. So my goal in this section is to introduce finite probability spaces, uh, explain what an event is, provide a definition of probability measure, so here we go, finite probability spaces. I find this concept a lot easier to understand with a picture in mind. So here I go. So finite probability space first are used to model an experiment where a finite number of outcomes can occur, right? And we typically call the set of all possible outcomes from the experiment omega. So here, here's my picture. So we call here omega everything that could happen uh, as an outcome from the experiment will occur within this uh, omega, this space, this universe, right? And the things that are inside this universe, this, this space, are the outcome of the experiment. So maybe there's like, a, this is the first outcome, this is another possible outcome, another outcome, another outcome, right? And so this is, this is what the outcome is. And then an event Will, will simply be basically a subset of this omega, a subset of the things that are inside the uh, the universe. So, for example, we can look at this. This will be one type, one event. Maybe this will be another event, right? So that's what just like an, what an event is. And to this now, we can tackle a probability measure p, and this probability measure p. We can think of, about it as just being something, right, that we can use to weight each outcome of the, of, of the experiment or just kind of like try to measure how big each uh, uh, outcome is, right? And in this, in, since it's a probability also, it will sum up to one. And so that's, that's what a probability measure is. And once you tackle on the, the omega, which is the set of all the things that could happen, and to that you tackle on a probability measure p, then you have something. This this set this this tuple is called a probability space. Very simple. So let's let's move on to a concrete example to make things a lot clearer. So let's run an experiment where we're tossing a tossing a coin three times. That's our experiment. All right. Now. We can we can let's let's list out like the set of all the possible things that could happen our universe here. So when we toss a coin three times in a row, we can get all heads. We can get head head, and then for the last toss, we get a tail. We can get head tail head, and you you know the you know the the song. At the end, maybe we can get all tails 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 right. So. So this is a, a universe, a space, and to this we can tackle. Uh, well, in ma in mathematical notation, you you might see it like not notated this way, right? Where it's just like a set. And then to this we can add basically a pro a probability measure, like a, a way to measure how big each each set is. So in this case, for example, if you want to find the probability, uh, let me just show this very quickly. The probability of getting this head, head, head one. So if you assume like this, each of these uh, ex coin tosses are independent, then just what we, that's just will be like p times p times p, and we get p squared, right? So we have a way of saying, of thinking about how big this set is, how big this outcome is, in my bad. And if you want to find tail, 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 uh, how big this size, this thing is, then we can just say, okay, how big is, or how heavy is this? So that's just going to be Q, 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 and that's Q, Q uh, cubed, right? Very simple. So we can use this to find like how heavy each of this, each one of these outcome is. And we can also use this to find uh, the probability of an event. So let's say like an event A is called first coin toss, is a head right so 
that event actually is represented by this right so the everywhere where we can see the first coin toss was ahead right so this is going to be the event a right because the first coin toss here was ahead first coin toss was ahead was ahead this one is not part of it because the first coin toss here was not ahead right so it's not part of the set so now if you want to find the probability of this set a then that's just going to be basically the weight of all the elements that are inside the set right so that's just going to be probability of getting head 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 plus probability of getting head head tail plus the probability of getting head tail head plus the probability of getting uh, head tail tail right so when you sum all these, then we get the sum, uh, we get the weight of like the set A, aka uh, the probability of this. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I want to talk about here. It's very simple when you have a picture and we can think about it this way. Um, so let's look at the formal definition, right? So, so a finite probability space consists of a sample space omega right and we already saw this is this just lists like all the possible outcome that can happen from the probability and a probability measures measure p which is just like a way we can measure how big each outcome is or and we can extend how big each event is right it's just like a way of measuring or like a weighting how each outcome how heavy each outcome is so the sample space omega is a non-empty finite set. So we say it's finite. So we're talking about finite spaces here. So it has to have a finite number of things inside it. And the probability measure of P is a function that assigns each element W a number between 0 and 1, right? Because it's a probability, we cannot have like a probability higher than 1. So each weight we can think is between, has to be uh, between 0 and 1, and they sum up to 1 overall. And 1 is the weight of the whole... Uh, the whole omega, the set of all the things that could happen. And that's pretty. And to find the probability of an event A, we just summed, sum up the stuff that are inside that event. Very simple stuff. And they are just telling us again about what we saw in this picture and what an event, how to find the, the size of an event. So, okay, next then let's look about random variable distribution and expectations. So here the goal is to talk about what the random variable is, uh, understand distribution, probability measure, expectation, and maybe look into like the Jensen inequality. So first, let's remember like the multi-parallel binomial tree model, right? So and I just covered this one in the previous video. So this is actually generated by a coin toss, right? Where we did uh, toss the coin twice, and u is a probability of it's like the up factor, d is the down factor. And if, it, if this doesn't make any sense to you, I suggest checking out my previous video. So if we set that as, as zero, the stock price is four. We flip the coin, we get ahead, we move up by, by a factor of two. Two times four is eight. And we flip again, we move on. And this is basically how we get to the uh, stock prices at time, at time uh, two, right? So we can say the stock price to pair from now is a random variable, right? Because this guy here is not known today, but it's a random variable because it depends, it's, ran, it's random and it depends on the outcome of the first coin tosses. And so I, and I, and I, and I tabulated here the different outcome that can happen from a coin toss. And a random variable, in this case S2, is we can think about it as nothing more than a function that takes each element that are inside this omega here, right? So the function is defined on on the on omega, the set of all the possible outcome, and it takes each one of these guys and assign it to a number between uh, to a real number, right? And that's what I have here. So it takes like an outcome of omega, for example, head head, and it spits out a number. For example, 16 in this case, right? Because if we get head head, then the stock price would be 16. And 
Hetel, text 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 an outcome, text text an outcome from the omega here, and then assign it to a number, a real number. And that's basically what a random variable is. So this is just a random variable, pretty much. And that's all what a random variable means. It's just a function that takes an uh, element of the an element of omega and assign it to a number, a real number. And that's what the definition he is just trying to say again, right? And yeah, so that's it. So that's it for random variable. So now let's talk about distribution and try to understand what distribution is. So when you have like omega, like a and a probability measure with it, then we can think of distributions just like a repartition of like the weight, right, within within omega. So for example, we can see here like um, like uh, this this outcome here is way bigger than this outcome. So this is like we're just one set of distribution, how the weight is distributed uh, around the space omega here. But you, you saw, we should also know that when, when we change the probability measure, right, so p tilde, then the distribution can actually be different now because we're using a different way of measuring the weight, a different way of measuring how big each outcome is. And when we do that, we can actually find a different distribution. Right? And so this and the distribution just means it's just like how how the masses are distributed along the, the omega here. And we can see that for example the distribution can be different, right? Over the set. Because the distribution can be different, but actually the outcome of the events are all are still the same, right? So changing for changing the probability measure to another measure doesn't change the outcome of an of an possible outcome of the experiment, but they do change something that's called a distribution, how the weights are distributed uh, along omega, and this is actually very important for us to understand. And to appreciate because later on we're going to do some things that are called like change of measure when we move from like the real world uh, probability to the risk not trap probability that we can use for pricing okay and then we just need to talk about very quickly about expectation and Jensen inequality and ex expectation is just basically uh, just a weighted average of like a random variable by the probability of the random variable occurring, right? So this is just like the the, the prob the sum of the probability weighted average of the random variable. Um, very simple, um, very simple basic. Uh, uh, if you took a basic statistic class, then this is not nothing too complicated. And for the variance, also is the same thing. It's just like basically the average uh, distance from the mean squ uh, squared. We can think about it that way okay and then so the jensen inequality is just like this inequality here uh, if you have a function that's convex then the expected value of like the, the output from that function would be greater than or equal to uh, that function taking in as an input the expected value for the random variable of a number x and I will prove this and we'll go more into it once we need it during uh, as the, the model, looking at the model we're building. But for now, I think this is just good enough for us to know. All right. Thank you very much for your time and see you next time where we'll be talking about conditional expectation.